You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Marcus Aurelius The history of Stoicism is divided into three parts. The early Stoa, with Zeno being the founder of the school and thus the first one to introduce the philosophy to the world. The middle Stoa, including Panatius and Posidonius. And finally, the late Stoa, including the most prominent Stoics, Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, Epictetus and Mazonius Rufus. Their works are by far the best preserved, which are still widely studied and discussed today. Today's feminism has many followers, but also many critics, but what do the Stoics think of it? Is feminism at all compatible with Stoicism? Let's find out. The entire cosmos consists of four elements, fire, air, water and earth. These elements are in constant motion and are constantly assembling themselves into new objects. Something is created, remains for a while, disintegrates again into its components, which in turn form the building blocks for something new. The human being is also subject to this constant growth and decay, or becoming and passing. The process of becoming and passing is not arbitrary or accidental, but is subject to a strict law. This inner force which determines, regulates, orders and drives the development of the course of the world is called Logos, reason or sometimes even God. It is an acting force that can be compared to genes, which, as a control mechanism, regulate the development of organisms. The Logos makes sure that everything runs sensibly in a predetermined way. Everything that exists and that happens is useful in a big context and therefore makes sense. Everything follows a strict, unchangeable law prescribed by the Logos. There is no exception. Everything runs like clockwork. There is no coincidence. What appears to us as a coincidence is only our limited view, which does not see through the causally determined overall context. While members of the first wave feminist movement struggled with women's rights, such as the right to vote, hold public office, work, earn equal pay, own property, receive education, enter contracts, have equal rights within marriage, and maternity leave, one could say that for today's feminism, at least in the Western world, suffering means feeling oppressed or being seen as the weaker gender. It is obvious that there is misery and misfortune in the world. For the Stoics, therefore, the problem arises how evil comes into the world and how to reconcile it with the benevolent nature. The Stoics make do with the consideration that what at first seems to be something evil on closer inspection proves to be necessary for the orderly function of the cosmos. Again, it is only our limited view that is not able to overlook the course of the entire cosmos and therefore considers what is useful and meaningful for the whole organism to be a misfortune, just because one is personally affected by it. Even the evil that humans do to humans belong to the well-ordered world plan. It is part of the ethics of Stoicism not to be influenced by it in any way. External appearances, which one must suffer through the malice of other people, must not disturb the peace of mind of the Stoic. The one who does evil does harm to himself by violating his own dignity and humiliating himself. One could argue that the Stoics would disregard today's feminism as a movement since it is predicated on the idea of being oppressed. Some of the Stoics had their own slaves. They believe that even slaves have the ability to be happy. This does not mean that women are comparable with slaves, but that in accordance with the philosophy of Stoicism, one has to love one's own destiny, amor fati. One's fate is seen as part of the Logos and the Cosmos, which one has to accept. However, one could say that if slaves started a movement back then, the Stoics might have accepted their decision as they would see it as part of the Logos and deem it as important for the orderly functioning of the Cosmos. The point is that, while they would not oppose a feminist movement, they would certainly not join it. The human being is integrated as a part in the big overall context of the world. From this it follows that he is related to everything in the world. This is especially true for the relationship to his fellow man. The Stoic is a citizen of the world who makes no distinction between Romans and non-Romans, free and slave, between men and women. Human dignity is suitable for all of them, since they are all participants in the world affairs led by the Logos. The Stoics believe in equality between men and women. They believe that men and women are equal parts of the cosmos. Based on this, one can assume that the Stoics would not judge women as unequal on the basis of their gender. Mazonius Rufus, for example, states that it is just as appropriate for women to study philosophy as it is for men. 
Seneca believes that women have the same capacities as men for virtue and Epictetus argues that women are equal by nature. Knowing this, one can conclude that the fact that Stoics would not join the feminist movement is not based on their views on gender, but on the ideas and actions of people who subscribe to extreme feminist ideology. The course of the world takes place with necessity according to the guidelines of nature. Everything is causally determined from the beginning. This also applies to humans. Man has no real freedom. Freedom can only mean that he recognizes the Logos with his mind and submits to its determinations insightfully and willingly. Freedom is the insight into necessity. One could say that the Stoics would consider it necessary for people who see themselves as members of the feminist movement to submit to the Logos, that they would see complaining and demanding as unacceptable. Epictetus writes, Do not demand that everything happens the way you want, but want everything to happen the way it happens, and you will live in peace. It is the Logos in which all people participate equally and which makes them related to each other. All people form a single inner community. They are thus mutually dependent on each other and on working together. Man is a citizen of the world. This could be one of the strongest points from which one could conclude that Stoics would consider feminism a partially good thing. If one group of people feels neglected, disrespected or isolated from the other, it is the duty of human beings to make everyone feel included and respected within the cosmos. Marcus Aurelius writes, what is beneficial to the cosmos is also beneficial to me. What does not benefit the swarm does not benefit the individual bee either. Whether today's feminism can be regarded as beneficial for the cosmos and thus for people as a whole is questionable. Marcus also believes that all rational beings are related to each other and that it is according to human nature to care for all people. According to the Stoics, the cosmos as a whole is of unimaginably large dimensions. The individual human being is only a vanishingly small particle in it. This insight justifies why the human mind is not able to see through the course of events in its magnificence and therefore mistakenly considers his personal, small misfortune to be an evil. Furthermore, this insight helps to not take what happens to everyone too seriously in comparison to the overall course of the cosmos. Whether adherents of feminism take gender issues too seriously is a matter of interpretation. For Stoics, one thing is clear, every misfortune is in harmony with the course of the cosmos. The basic demand of Stoicism requires to live according to nature and to follow consciously and willingly the way of life given by the Logos. This becomes possible if one allows his behavior to be guided exclusively by the mind and, in particular, suppresses the impulses of emotions and drives. The best way to follow the Logos is not to attach great importance to events coming from outside. They are determined by the Logos and must therefore be accepted without the participation of emotions and effects. Such a way of life leads to apatia, to serenity undisturbed by emotions, and to ataraxia, to peace of mind not disturbed by external events. Both apatia and ataraxia are equated with happiness. A movement like feminism is clearly characterized by very strong emotions, emotions that are triggered by a feeling of injustice. The philosophy of Stoicism teaches how to cope with one's own fate. Rejection from one's own fate is not accepted by the Stoic philosophy. This does not mean, however, that there is nothing one can do about it. Stoics believe that one achieves the highest good only through virtue. Change yourself and thus change the world. As Alexander Solzhenitsyn said, if you want to change the world, who do you begin with? Yourself or others? Or Jordan Peterson, if you can't bring peace to your household, how dare you try to rule a city? Every human being has his place in the great overall course of events in which very specific tasks are assigned to him, which he has to fulfill and which are necessary for the orderly and reasonable course of the cosmos. It does not matter whether this task is large or small. Even the smallest cog is important for the entire organism. From this follows the duty for the Stoic to take part in public life and to contribute to the fact that human coexistence is fair and humane to the Logos. Their retreat into private life and the limitation to personal well-being is not permitted. This could be the strongest point for feminism within Stoicism. One could argue that by accusing the followers of feminism of not accepting their fate and simply living with it, one is violating the theory of duty in public life that Stoicism prescribes. It is therefore the task of the citizens of the world to enable peaceful coexistence. 
However, one can argue that coexistence in the 21st century is already made possible. So, what is considered a duty in public life is a matter of interpretation. How much energy and time should be invested in this aspect is also questionable. Although Stoics clearly support activism, it remains open how much of it is really good and where the golden mean is. Happiness in itself can never be an immediate goal in life. Whoever strives for happiness will certainly miss happiness. Happiness is a feeling that arises when one lives his life in harmony with nature. Disturbing emotions such as fear, hate, envy or anger cannot upset the soul nor can physical pain or unfulfilled needs. The pursuit of power, recognition, influence or prosperity has no meaning. Apatia and ataraxia then follow as if by magic. One then reaches a state of inner peace and inner balance, which Zeno refers to as the well-being flow of life. By fighting for equality of outcome, certain members of feminism violate this aspect of Stoic philosophy. According to the Stoics, one should not directly wish for the result, rather one should live what one preaches, and embody any changes one wishes to see in the world. How much of this refers to the ideology of feminism is also a matter of interpretation. What is clear is that one shouldn't try to change the whole world by demanding exaggerated results, but one should be the best version of oneself and thus change the world for the better. A Stoic can be a feminist, an environmental activist, and even a political activist. That Stoicism supports activism is very clear. However, the question is not whether this is permissible in Stoicism, but rather how much of it is acceptable. Fighting for women's rights is not the same as fighting for the extermination of white men. Drawing attention to the protection of our climate is not the same as giving up one's identity for it and damaging one's own character. So it is extremely important how much and in what way you fight for something. The main focus should always be your own personal, emotional development and the well-being of your fellow citizens. You should learn to love your destiny and to make the best out of it. Based on these observations, one can conclude that contemporary feminism is not compatible with Stoic philosophy and that the Stoics would reject feminism as an ideology.